Welcome back guys. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to talk about how can we manage Apache NiFi through the medium of REST APIs calls. So this came up as a request from one of my viewers. And as always, I'm going to comply. So I've set up a page in my GitHub repository and I have all the scripts here and some explanation around it. So this is just a bare um, basic I would say example of how we can interact with NiFi using the REST API endpoints. And also I put a link in the I put a link in the page that will take you to the NiFi uh, REST API documentation. So basically everything that happens in front um let a uh, NiFi UI it's communicating to the back end through the medium of um REST API calls. So here we have bunch of uh calls and uh, all you have to do is just click through them and then you'll get the information let's say you click here you get everything uh what's the response and what's the endpoint uh in its use case so let's not linger more about it and let's jump into it <laughs> Cool. So before we start, what I want to show you guys, if let's say uh, you don't know what API gets triggered when you do a particular action, I'll show you guys a trick how you can find out. So basically, we're going to observe NiFi logs um, to see what they do uh, while we do an action in the front end. So we're going to go to my NiFi uh, log. So go to your log location. And you see there is this log called NiFi. Oh, sorry. NiFi requests. Oh, that's bad. This log here. So let's go and do a tail on this NiFi requests log. Cool. So right now you see we get a, a bunch of endpoints. So this is cool. Uh, we got API summary and stuff. What I'll do right now, I'll put this to the side and let me let me move this one here as well. Oh, there you go. So we already see that something happened here so if i were to say if i were to do let's say go to this menu here automatically see a bunch of interaction with the system and i want to say i want to go to summary you see a bunch of api endpoints are getting cold so actually let's make it even clearer let's go here and now i'll go again and do the same action so if we were to count it like six calls where he got uh let, let's actually maximize this and go through the sequence so basically here we can see that he called the summary page uh, so we got a summary summary again uh, and then he got a list of processors from the root he once he got that he um, he listed the process group with this UUID, which is 2AB. If we look on the canvas, this is this one actually the 2AB probably is the root. Yeah, that's the root one you can see here. So you can actually take a look in the back end in your logs to understand what happens and where is your NiFi going with it. And then once you have that, you can, let's say, NiFi API controller. You can pretty much copy this and go to the REST API documentation. So let's do a control F, a go controller, and you can find information here how you can get, how you can put, how you can interact with it. So uh, let's not linger more of this. Let's jump into our the main the topic of this story. So basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna see how we can stop, start, and disable a particular process, processor, and how we can uh, start and stop um, a process group so basically we have this dummy process group here at, uh, and inside here i got uh, a jra flow file and a log attribute so basically let me just go ahead and disable this so we won't get an issue so basically the first thing you want to do when you when you have a particular situation like this you want to uh, let me sorry let me close this one and make it and clear it because we're going to use this one to run our commands um let me just all right so 
to be able to change the status or the state of a processor, first you need to find the process ID. Basically, you know, this if you click on one of the components, this long UUID. Uh, the way you find it, it's by traveling uh, in, inside the process group, uh, finding the process group ID. And we, you find the process group ID using the process group name. So it's important to give this processors a particular name. So let's say in this case, it's called start. But let's call it start uh, uh, PG. Right? And now going to our script. Uh, here, this, the first second step would be to have the current version of the processor, basically. And uh, you want to find the current state. I had to complete this one here. So basically, you want to you want to know what's its current state in, in case you don't want to start something that is already running, or if you want to stop something that it's already stopped. Basically, just to make it clean, and then build a payload. The start and stop um, process. Uh, sequence they require you to give it uh, a payload so if you see this is the payload that we have to give it so you want to give it what is the future running state you want it to be in in this case we want to start it so it's going to be in, in status running and what is the id of the processor we want to change basically here and here processor id and what is the version of the processor that you are currently at and you're changing the state and the client ID. Client ID can be a random UUID. And then the endpoint that you're going to interrogate or you're going to run the command against it. In this case, it's going to be an HTTP non-secure installation on my local host. And I put this host name and port uh, as variables or parameters. You can set them here. Uh, I'm currently running at port 8081. The NIFI API endpoint the the class of the endpoint is going to be processor and the processor uh the processor id now what we want to do next here we want to we want to get the process group id using the process group name so first there is this and there is this rest api endpoint that will give us the entirety of the resources on our canvas so then what we want to do we want to capture this so if i'll do an echo and resources sorry let me give it a space it's gonna be a massive json so we're gonna do we want to use jq here to actually capture all the process group all or not all the process group that carries that process group name in this case here process group test pg and if you recall, we changed this. Uh, yeah, so actually the, the process group is called test PG. Uh, let me go back here. So I'll set up the process group name. Let me clear this on so I can put it up. And next, we're going to run this particular command. So this is going to capture the string um, using this J, JQ syntax. Uh, we basically... Uh, if we're going to do a, an echo on the capture value, PG. So basically, he captured our process group string. So if you see, it ends up in 049. We go to NiFi here and you click on it, you see it's 049 as we expected. Now, going back here, uh, I want to get rid of some, uh, I want to get rid of this process group thing. Let's run sort of a replace. And now we have a clean process group ID. So if we're going to go echo PG. Okay, now that we have the process group ID captured, what we're going to do next, uh, we're going to trickle down inside this process group ID and we're going to capture the ID of our processor. So in this case, our processor is called start PG. You, you guys remember. We have this, um, uh, what is it, PG name, and then we have the processor name here. So let's go ahead. Actually, this is redundant. It's not really required there because we already set it up upstairs. Let's go ahead and export this name and put it the same value as we have it on our canvas. So this is just for demonstration purposes. So now, 
First, what we're going to do, we're going to get all the processors that are inside that process group. So basically, this command is going to get an, the API endpoint responsible for that process group ID. And if we would do an, uh, I want to say echo, it's just a massive blob of JSON. And what we're going to do next, we're going to capture process site actually let me push this one to the side so you guys can see first we're gonna process we're gonna capture the processor id by using the scam and and using this payload basically using jq we're gonna capture we're gonna select um whenever the component name carries the processor name give me the pro component id and the same uh, for the other two items we capture, which is the version and the status. And then we generate a client ID using this function, and we're going to put it to lower. Let's run them all three. Over back here. And let's review the data. Basically, let's run an echo on the client ID, a random UUID. Uh, let's do an echo on the. Yeah, Processor version. That's the processor version. Processor ID. And processor status. So you can see that it's a ID 118 and it's stopped. And you can get 118 and the status is stopped. So now we have everything we need to start trying start, stop, and disable commands. It's time to interact with the processor in the front in that is running in the front UI through the intermediate of the backend. So let's go ahead and do so. So first, what we're gonna do, we're gonna check the status of that particular process. So we're gonna make sure that yes, indeed, it's um, it's currently stopped. And let's go back here and let's start it. So basically. We're going to copy this command. So if you see here, we're changing the status from its current to running. We have the processor ID that we capture here, uh, the processor version, previous step, and the client ID. As a matter of fact, let's run this again. So we can guarantee that the version is up to date and I'm going to, I'm not going to get any errors. Uh, let's copy this command and press enter. All right, so we see we get a response here that we're not going to go over it basically give us the status of its current um where he is right now in terms of status so we can see that our processor is up and running so he generated um the state change without us having to touch the front ui so let's let me move this one here run this commands in the same time now what we want to do, we want to stop it. So stopping pretty much the same. Um, it's just right now we have to run again the processor version. So basically every time you run this command, you want to run this here. And I'll show you guys an example. If I were to stop this processor and not change the version, this most likely will fail. Hopefully it will fail. So let me just clear this one. No, it didn't fail. He actually stopped it. Correct. So take that back. So it stopped it. Now, going back and let's disable the processor. Basically, disabling the processor, it will mark it as unusable here. So you can see that the processor got disabled. If I were to start now this processor, what do you guys think uh, is going to happen? Let's clear this one here and run it. So it immediately sends us a clear message that the processor is disabled. Um, so you can't start a disabled processor. So what we need to do, we have to actually put it in stopped state, in stop state. So the way back from disabled to, to, to be able to be in a runnable state, you have to walk it back to stop state. If you go here, right now it's in stopped. Uh, similar to the UI, if you were to disable here and you say, hey, start now, 
first you have to enable which implies that you have to put it in stop and then you start cool so that's how you manage a processor now how do we do it at the process thing group level this is a bit easier um and the way you do it um uh, basically uh we want to find the process group so we already have the process group as you guys recall here we captured it here let's copy this and paste it again that's going to capture all the information we could have done the same with uh, the one here and to start the process basically the only thing actually sorry guys this is the command so it's a it's a put uh curl command against the api endpoint pointing to that process group so let's copy this one and let's see what is the status so right now everything is stopped here so if we run a start at this level you will start all available components inside the process group so let's run this cool so right now we can see that it's its current state it's in running basically it gives me a feedback as the outcome of that command so if we were to refresh here yeah we can see that it's running and let's go back and let's stop it and the stop command pretty much changes the state from running to stopped cool and we refresh and our process group is stopped so basically um to recap what we did so far um, we saw how we can start stop disable uh, a processor and then we went over how we can stop and start a process group um, there are n options when you when we talking about the rest api and everything will sit in this uh, the combination of your let's say you want to update uh, you have to provide it with a valid payload in order to make the adequate changes but the rest api i would say it it's able to do everything that we can do in the front end but this is a good starting point for you guys to go and play around it and change it and interact with using rest api obviously this is a non-secure installation so it comes easier if you were to use a secure you need more um options with your curl command so that's an easy quick start on how you can use rest apis to interact with knifi so i hope you guys enjoy this tutorial i see you in next